Alrighty guys, epoxy resin swirl cut lap on an EPS shortboard. So I'll show you a few tips, a few techniques. Hopefully we can improve your board building. <laughs> High performance. A wide flimsy container. Firstly, let me apologize for filming this angle. I'm still learning. Secondly, I have my hat backwards, so I'm cool. At this point, guys, you don't want to be muddling your colors around and mixing them up. Each squidgy pull, make sure you clean your squeegee off with a clean rag. Otherwise, your board will end up looking like your three-year-old smeared his feces all over the wall. Hey, so I glassed the board yesterday afternoon, three o'clock. It's been sitting for 20 hours. Uh, epoxy's rock hard. So I'm just gonna do a little technique to get a cut lap. I'm gonna sand along the tape line. You wanna sand along the tape line here where my delicate little finger is showing you and just focus your efforts on the tape and glass ridge. And another clip of my delicate little finger. You can see I focus my efforts just on the tape and the glass, not down on the rail, not anywhere else. You just want to burn that glass away on that tape line. And here we have it guys, the whole point. Once you've hit that tape line with your sander, it's as simple as making a relief cut with your razor blade and just pulling that up. It's as simple as pulling tape up. Should make a nice clean cut right along your tape line all the way around. A couple of relief cuts at the nose and tail and you're ready to go to the next stage. These are little hard rubber rollers you can buy from Bunnings or any big box sort of outlet shop. You use them when you do a cut lap to push the glass flush with the foam. That way when you do your next lamination layer, you don't have a ridge and you don't have air that gets stuck between your cut lap and your deck lamination. I'll give you a little demo. So as you work this rubber roller around on your cut lap, you don't want to use a too strong a hand, you just want a constant pressure. Push that cut lap down so it's flush with your foam. You don't want to push the foam down guys. Alrighty, from this stage, go forth and mark out your fin box positions. Yes, I know, it's a mystery wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in an enigma. <laughs> Before you route any holes out, chuck your PPE on. Make sure it is good to go. And now we route. Take your fin box routing, slow and steady, and make sure you do a dry test run before you move your jig plane. Alrighty, I've given them 12 hours, the boxes are set. I'm just going to give it a little rough up, a little sand around the boxes. A little bit of epoxy came out of the boxes. I'm going to do the patches today on the boxes, so it's ready for deck lamination tomorrow. Now I need to rough that epoxy up, otherwise we won't get a good bond. Just give it a little tickle of the sandal. Sandal? Sander. And then we will do the deck patches. Fucking epoxy, man. So a double four ounce over the fin boxes and we move forth. Make sure you mix your epoxy well guys, I can't stress this enough. Keep mixing. 
Mix it some more, please. Just, just keep mixing. Yeah, I, I understand you feel like this. But, keep mixing. your open thin boxes closed. Very important. So when I'm taping off my hard edge on a, on a performance board, shaka bra, go shaka bra just in front of your thin box. And that's kind of where I want my hard edge to start. And you can just follow your rail tuck anyway, it's the same as when you shaped it. So just bring that tape along the rail and bring it up so you can build a nice little resin dam along along the hard edge of the rail. They let go money, you want to go home. And then just fade it back down into the tuck and into the rail. You might be able to hear I have the heater on. You can generally tell how cold it is by how erect my nipples are. The real reason I have the heater on is I bring the temperature up in the room, get the epoxy nice and thin viscosity, a nice thin viscosity, thin viscosity. I warm everything up. Don't think you can skimp with the tape now. If you skimp on the tape and you do shit tape, as the resin, this is epoxy, as it heats, it'll make the glue release from the tape and it'll stick to your lamp. And then it's, it's just, we've all done it, we've all been there. It's just, it's just so annoying trying to clean it all off. You can use cheaper tape, wider, cheaper tape, but make sure that tape is on a good tape. It's not on your lamp. So if it releases glue, it's gonna release it onto the tape and not onto your hard work. So with my epoxy fill coats, I'll mix my epoxy and I'll let it sit for a little bit till it starts to warm up slightly. Makes it a little bit easier to push around the board. You really gotta make sure epoxy's mixed part A, part B, otherwise it will not go hard and your board will be fucked. You get yourself some tape, stick side down, and just run over the board like that and it will pick up any foreign objects that you have. I'll go this way here to the concaves. Any sort of dust, lint, dog hair. All right, sand coat, pot coat, fill coat, whatever you want to call it. Put that resin on the board, push it out. Nose to tail, nose to tail, get it all on the board. Now what you're looking to do is just going rail to rail, pushing the resin around, rail to rail, filling in any pinholes or weave or whatever, scuff marks, rail to rail, and then come back the other way, cross hatching those strokes. Little saying without the swearing goes, the more you mess with it, the more you will mess it. So you just do rail to rail. Now once you've done that guys, you want to go nose to tail with nothing more than the weight of the brush. So just the weight of the brush to get those cross strokes out, nice and light. Once you've done that, nose to tail, walk away and it will self level itself out and it should look a little something like this.
So the request was for the resin tint, the resin swirl to somewhat mimic the ocean, ocean waves crashing, ocean splashing, maybe it's camouflage for sharks, I don't know, but that's what we got. So the technique of using a long, wide, open container to kind of get the longer streaks in the, in the resin. I used three colors for this. You don't want to use too many colors because you will muddle it. And you need to use colors in the same color spectrum. So I've got dark blue, light blue, and white. The thing with resin swirls, guys, is when you use those colors, if you have two colors that are somewhat similar and they muddle together, uh, white and dark blue will make light blue. If you go with something like an orange and a green, it's gonna to mix together and make brown. So just think about that when you do your colors. Cut lap with a pin line to hide my terrible, terrible job at cut lapping, but also just to make it pop. Pin line will make these colors pop. If you have any comments or questions about this build, I try to keep it short and sharp because I didn't wanna do a long build video. But if you do have any questions, about certain things that I may have left out. I did leave a lot of footage out straight to the cutting room floor. Let me know and I will answer your questions or do a follow-up video. If you guys are looking for tips or help, maybe subscribe. The more you guys wanna see, the more I'll do. It's not easy to film and construct a surfboard, nor is the editing and talking to a camera part easy.